This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Hi YouTubers, today we have a dryer that keeps stopping mid-cycle. So it works for a while, maybe about 10 minutes in, it just shuts down. But then if you let it cool down for a while, it will uh, start back up. And this is usually pertaining to a motor that's just really dirty and it has a little um, thermal cutoff if it gets too hot to protect the motor it'll shut down its power but then when it cools down you can use it again this one is particular one is a Maytag electric dryer and uh, it's an older one probably about 15 20 years old here's the model number over here but this uh, instruction is going to be one that would pertain to most dryers. We're going to go over how to uh, get the front panel off. Here's the model number. And then how to clean the motor. It's pretty easy. So on this model, a lot of uh, dryers have this in common. It's little clips here that you can use a standard head screw screwdriver, flathead screwdriver to press in on. Uh, they're about three inches in from both corners and then you can hinge up the top. Be careful this top doesn't just come flying down on you during the, the work. And make sure I have it unplugged. This one's a uh, electric one, has a big plug. If this video is helping you, please consider pressing down in the lower right hand corner of your screen the subscribe button, and that really helps our channel. Thanks. So now I'm taking out these two screws that are in the corners near the top. They're what's holding on the top of the front panel and usually at the bottom there's a couple of clips that are easy to disengage. You just lift up the front panel. We're just going to lift it up to get it off of those bottom clips and <clears throat> I'm going to leave these wires attached. I'm just going to hinge it off to the side. Those are the wires for the door switch and then the next thing I have to do is get the belt off and that's going to allow me to pull the tumbler out. So I'm reaching in here show you guys a picture of what this looks like. Sorry it's so dark, but you can see this big wheel over here to the upper left-hand corner of the screen. And I need to reach in on the right side and on the left side, kind of like I'm hugging the machine and disconnect that belt. Now I can lift up on the belt and I can get the whole tumbler to come out. So I have to kind of lift up and pull out. That's going to give me really good access to the motor. So the motor is pretty dirty. It's just lint that's accumulated over time. And it can uh, get in the way of the motor being able to keep itself cool. And then again, if it overheats, it'll just shut off. If you're losing heat mid-cycle, it's a different problem. Here's some electrical cleaner you can get from Home Depot in the electronics section. I'm going to use that to clean up the motor. I've already vacuumed it pretty good to get rid of most of the lint. And this stuff's just going to get into the places I can't, the vacuum can't get and knock some of this dust out away from the cooling fins that are like a little fan that help keep it cool. And also they're going to clean all the electrical parts. It's really good stuff. Contact cleaner. And I sprayed some also on these contacts. This is the where the power comes into the motor. I'm just going to put this modular connector back on and make sure it's fully seated. I'm going to push it all the way in as far as it'll go. So I clean that. I clean the motor. And the dryer is pretty clean now. I'm just spinning this idler wheel, making sure it can spin easily. I'm spinning these rollers. These are support rollers. They spin easily. If some of these things can't spin, they may be, I'm going to spin this blower wheel that spins really well too. If these things can't spin well, they can create so much um, friction on the motor that the motor would overheat. So I'm just making sure that those are all moving really well. It looks good. These are the little cooling fins I was telling you guys about. And now I've put the tumbler back into position. And I'm just making sure it spins really well before I put the belt on. So I put it into position 
and just checking to make sure that it's in as far as it'll go and that it can spin easily. And then I'll be able to put the belt back on. It looks good, everything's in position. So I'm gonna reach back in there. You can see that big either wheel and I'm gonna put the belt, sorry again, it's so dark in there. I put the belt over the either wheel using one hand and then I'll pull the idler wheel to my right and loop it over the smaller pulley, which is on the motor, which is a little further to my right, a little bit out of the camera scene. So I've got it now over the idler wheel and I'm turning the tumbler back and forth to make sure that the belt won't come off. I'm turning it to my left or counterclockwise. I want to do a couple of full revolutions. And now I'm reaching in here to the ducting and the door to clear out any lint that might be caught in there. Because if you have a whole lot of lint caught in there, it can overheat. That'll shut it off too, making sure the filter is nice and clear. So these little grooves in the front panel are going to go on these clips on the bottom. That's what holds the bottom in. Got that in, now I'm tightening those screws that are holding the top of the front panel. Now I can close the lid again and push down to where it locks on its little tabs here in the front. And now I'm gonna do a test. I'm gonna set it for more dry, a regular load. I'm gonna set it for regular temperature, which is the highest temperature. And I'm gonna put a lot of clothes in. Here's the dryer vent tube. I straightened it out a little bit. It had more turns in it. The more turns, the more likely it'll overheat. So I just tried to minimize it to two turns. So I've got it full of a lot of clothing to give it a good test. And it did great. It did not cut off and it went full cycle. Watching our video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. Free to contact me at the email listed below which is scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com with any of your questions. And also, if you need to have a uh, FaceTime meeting with me or a Zoom meeting, you can click on one of the links below in the description and we can set up a 15 minute or 30 minute video conference where we can work on your appliance problem. So thanks again for all your support and for watching the video.